Now, how to characterize this waste? That is becoming a very big question because applications we have seen and two, three applications I have talked about in today's class. The issue is how to characterize the waste. So, the first characterization is that a waste can be defined based on its water content. A sludge, how do you treat sludge? If you can filter out water, you are recovering a precious material or resource. The moment water is reduced, the volume gets reduced, you can handle it better. So, water content is the most important parameter when we talk about characterization of the waste. Is this correct? Why do you do incineration? So that the volume gets reduced. Density of the waste is very important again. If you have waste like organic soil, which is coming out of the dredging process, what you will do with this? It is of no use. So, density is very important. A dredge material, ideal dredge material should be dense. It should be rock pieces or gravel pieces or sands, so that they are more stable. So, density is a physical parameter which talks about the strength of the dredge material, particularly for infrastructure project. You call it as particle size distribution, we normally call it as granulometry. Particle size distribution has a limitation, it talks about only components or the fractions of gravel, silt, stone, sand, clay and so on, is it not? So, in what way granulometry is different? than the particle size distribution characteristics. I was talking about the rheology, how easily these materials will flow in water in a slurry form. So, this is where you have to define the you know complete morphology of the grains in the waste which will fall under the category of granulometry study. Ideally, you should prefer a waste material which is rounded completely, so that the rheology becomes very easy. You do not require much of energy to push it in a stream, so pumpability increases. Apart from these physical attributes, what are the other constituents you are more interested in finding out? The total carbon component, why it is so? If more carbon is there, what happens? The water demand of the system is too much. If you have more carbon, the carbon basically acts like a lubricant. You agree or no? You have, you have carbon bushes in electric motors. Why? Less friction, less resistance. So, idea is if more carbon is present, the water demand goes up. That is why class F fly ashes with more carbon are not suitable for concrete the water retention capacity increases. So, you have to incinerate these ashes, so that the carbon component is lost and then their reactivity becomes better. Second thing is, as carbon is a lubricant, you cannot compact a system where carbon is too much, clear. So, that is another reason why you want to get rid of organic carbon and of course, organic carbon is always easy to decompose over a period of time. So, you should understand a waste material or a byproduct, how much carbon it has, so that you can use it for a certain application. Carbonate content, where do you use this concept of carbonate content? That is in the water. If you have sands with more carbonate content, what is going to happen? You will prefer this type of sands or not? Why? In case of any contamination, this carbonate is very vulnerable, particularly acid contamination. See, this type of situation occurred in your which project in the country? Bindya, I think you should be able to tell. Very famous project related to Indian Navy, Seabird project at Mangalore. Seabird. It is a very big navy base which has been developed some 5, 6 years back. And there was a time when we used to sit in our lab, analyze maybe 10,000 samples of the sand to check what is the carbon 
carbonate content of these soils. Now, if you have more carbonate content in the sand, whether it is a good material for construction or not, have no idea. Why? Crushing strength of sand is more, carbonates is more. This is a simple question. Sand is more. So, the moment more and more carbonates come into the sand, the bearing capacity and the crushing strength of the deposit decreases. So, you should not construct anything, you know, on a system, even on sands, unless you know what is the carbonate content of this material. This is becoming a very big issue and you will not believe that because of this simple thing, the project was on hold for a very long time. Government of India was paying a very heavy penalty to the contractor and there was a very big mess all around. Well, then comes the third issue, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, copper, lead, zinc, chromium, nickel, iron, manganese. So, whenever you are using this type of byproducts or the waste, you should be sure what is the concentration of all these elements or the metals which can leach out very easily. So, the moment you lift it from the or from some source and you dump it somewhere, the system is going to become again hyperactive. So, this is where you have to make it very sure that the leachability of the material happens to be very less. Have you heard of organochlorines? Well, this is a form of a contaminant which is becoming very common these days. It is a form of a chloride which is present too much in the sea. And once you bring it onto the ground or onshore, it becomes a secondary source of contamination or pollution. Total extractable hydrocarbons, most of these places there could be oil slick, oil spill and so on. So, you would like to understand how much amount of hydrocarbon is associated with the waste or the soil or the geomaterial before you start using it. A heavily oil contaminated sand or geomaterial will show you very less shear strength, alright. So, you should be careful while recommending the material for its application anywhere. Similarly, TBT and DBT that is tributylene and dibutylene, these are the compounds which are becoming very important to be ascertained in any project related to infrastructure. Design of an underwater underground petroleum tank. Do you think that this is a structural engineering problem or, or geotechnical engineering problem? And let me add here, suppose soil has lot of lead into it or mercury into it. So, the moment you construct a tank underground, there could be a leaching of lead and mercury into oil reservoirs clear and the moment entry of these elements takes place into the hydrocarbons, they are totally spoiled, you cannot use them for any purpose. So, truly speaking, this is a geo environmental engineering problem where later on structural engineer takes over. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, they are becoming very big bug on the entire construction industry. So, this is where you have to ascertain the properties in terms of toxicity tests. I will be talking about these type of tests later on, where you do complete bioassay of the material. Bioassay is nothing but understanding the material in totality that what are the contaminants or what are the elements which are present in it which may leach out into the environment. and of course, thermal and chemical stability of the material, whether it will remain stable or not. So, these are the things which you have to take into account when you are characterizing the waste. So, when we say characterization of the waste, there is a need for complete characterization, which includes physical, chemical and mineralogical properties, 
and thermal properties and electrical properties. So as you can guess very easily now, this lecture onwards I will pick up characterization of the waste or the material, geomaterials. And then second issue associated with the characterization of the waste would be, what is the basic objective of characterizing something? You are trying to understand the behavior, how it will behave and why do you want to understand the behavior? So that you can recommend a proper utilization for this material, is it not? So this is a very big subject in our activity where most of the people are trying to spend a lot of time, money and energy in understanding the material itself. Now interesting thing here to understand is that when we say material, the hidden you know communication is that no material is a waste material, clear? So idea is even if you are dealing with by products from the industry, if you can utilize this for some good applications, it becomes a man-made resource. So this is where most of the efforts are diverted in understanding the behavior of the material and recommending its proper utilization scheme. There may be a slight gap between uh, the moment I pick up characterization schemes because what is still pending is how we can use different energy field concepts in characterization of the material. So I will take up that issue also side by side. So that will tell you how the behavior can be mapped by doing simple tests in the laboratory. All right. I will finish my lecture here today, but I would like to show you one information which I received some time back through email. So this email was sent some time back by one of my friends where the title says, try to guess what the following images are. You might have seen also, I am sure. No? Nobody in the class? You have seen? Okay, let us go for some quiz. <laughs> what is this? Hmm? TV screen. Sorry? Stones. TV screen with? Can you guess now? Sorry? Huh? Bricks. Why not food grains? This is the photograph of e-waste. You should read this carefully. 4,26,000 cell phones discarded daily. So this is the magnitude of the problem. You like this? figure smoking, but the question is what is this figure, earlier human being and today, okay, good, good interpretation, what it is now, any guess, pen. Two lakh cigarette packs, the same number of Americans who die every six months due to smoking. <laughs> All right. So if you retrace it, this is how it looks like. Anyway, good imagination. I like this email, so I thought I'll share with you because the central theme of today's discussion was waste, industrial waste. What is this? Swimming pool or something else? Hmm? Setup of thousands of small pictures showing the traces of 11,000 planes, the number of commercial flights taking place in US every 8 hours, the amount of pollution. Okay the emissions which are coming out of the planes and their numbers and the amount which is going to 
intoxicate the entire atmosphere. So this is an interesting message. But look at the next slide. One lakh seventy thousand batteries are produced every fifteen minutes. What is this? It's difficult to guess, I think. Huh? It's becoming a bit clear now. Sixty-five thousand cigarettes. The number of Americans under eighteen that start smoking every month. What is this system? Wires, some circuit. One million of plastic cups thrashed every six hours in commercial flights. This is most interesting. Any guess? I don't know. Your guess seems to be correct. Now there are bottles, towels. You are quite close. Sixty thousand plastic bags discarded every five seconds. What is this? Two million plastic bottles dumped every five minutes. It's a beautiful painting, but it's not a picture. Any guess what it is? The theme of the lecture is industrial waste. Aluminium cans thrown into the garbage every thirty seconds. So this is a waste art. These pictures are. <laughs> part of the exhibit running the numbers and american self portrait of photographer chris jordan highlighting the millions of objects that accumulate in the planet well beyond our sight the numbers mentioned were obtained from the country the waste discarded only in the united states imagine what world figures are so this fellow durga he asked me to circulate this message environmental degradation is a cumulative effect of the actions each one of us takes therefore the solution also lies within each one of us help our planet think before you use reduce reuse and recycle so with this i finish my today's talk i hope you enjoyed this